DPP syphilis screen and confirm instructions for whole blood. The DPP syphilis screen and confirm test for whole blood contains the following components. The DPP test device, a microsafe tube, and a red cap running buffer bottle. Note that the DPP test device has blue and green lines in the test window. Materials required but not provided include a clock, watch, or other timing device. Remove the DPP test device from the foil pouch and place it on a flat surface. Label the device with the patient name or identification number. Obtain a venous or fingertip blood sample according to your normal laboratory practices. If you're taking a sample from a fingertip, wipe away the first drop of blood after pricking the finger and sample from the second drop. Touch the microsafe tube to the drop of blood, allowing the tube to fill with blood up to the black fill line. If you're taking a sample from venous blood, serum, or plasma, transfer the sample using a 10 microliter lab pipette rather than a microsafe tube. Applying the sample. To transfer the sample to well 1, line up the tip of the microsafe tube with the sample plus buffer well 1 and squeeze the bulb. The blood sample will flow onto the sample pad. Only if the sample does not come out of the tube, hold the tube vertically and slide a finger over the vent hole near the black mark. Then line up the tip with the sample plus buffer well 1 and squeeze the bulb. To transfer venous blood from a collection tube, use a 10 microliter lab pipette rather than the microsafe tube. After removing the red cap of the running buffer bottle, hold the bottle vertically and dispense two drops into well one of the DPP device by gently squeezing the side of the bottle. Caution: Holding the bottle sideways may produce invalid results. Now. Wait 5 minutes. Applying the buffer. Ensure that the blue and green lines in the test window have disappeared. After removing the red cap of the running buffer bottle, hold the bottle in a vertical position and dispense 5 drops into well 2 of the DPP device by gently squeezing the sides of the bottle. Caution: Holding the bottle sideways may produce invalid results. After applying the running buffer to well 2, wait at least 10 minutes, but no longer than 15 minutes, before reading the results. Read the results. If no test line has formed above the markings 1, TREP, or 2, non-TREP, in the test window, and if a reddish control line has formed above the C marking, the result is non-reactive, meaning that the sample contains no detectable antibodies to both treponymal and non-treponymal antigens. Be aware that this does not necessarily exclude syphilis infection. If a reddish test line is visible above marking 1, TREP, in the test window, and a reddish control line has formed above the C marking, then the result is reactive for treponymal antibodies only. If a reddish test line is visible above marking 2, non-TREP, in the test window, and a reddish control line has formed above the C marking, then the result is reactive for non-treponymal antibodies only. Be aware that the presence of any reddish color in a given test line, along with the visible control line, is considered reactive. Finally, if a reddish control line has not formed above the C marking in the test window, regardless of whether or not a test line is present above the markings 1, TREP, or 2 non-TREP, then the test is invalid and a new test must be performed. DPP Reader You can also use the DPP Desktop Reader to interpret your results. Start by pressing the black button on the back side of the reader to turn it on. When the display reads Ready, insert the DPP test into the slot on the right side of the reader. At least 10 minutes, but not later than 15 minutes after adding the running buffer from the red cap bottle to well 2. The reader will display the word testing 
for a few seconds before the results are shown. You may either transcribe your results or print them directly using the small mobile printer.